literally it was 15 feet away from us and it just went just over here what are you looking for Jerry? well I'm dropping all my gear <laughs> I wasn't quite prepared for that, but there's a I'm getting excited. There was a hair right beside us, and then it just like we've been here for what three minutes? <laughs> yeah, it set was up there the, the whole time, setting up the camera gear. And then I just happened to spot it. It was there the whole time, and it just ran back along. So what's the plan there? The plan is just to backtrack a little bit and see if we can get a rabbit to cook. Mm. Lead the way. It's really good cover for them here. It's really brushy and then everything looks like a rabbit. There's all lumps of snow on all the branches. runs they're not really long distance runners right so they'll sprint to a next little piece of cover and then they just hunker down the same way that that one was just hunkered down waiting for us to keep walking so we're uh, just outside North Bay on some crown land looking for some rabbits <clears throat> try to put something together something different than fish so it was right there and then you can see where it ran along here so you can see how spaced out these tracks are right like they're about six feet from toe to toe going through this big fluffy snow and it went right into that thick bit of uh, conifer growth we did a circle around and we didn't see any fresh tracks coming out of it anywhere. So and we didn't walk a very big circle, right? No. So presumably that rabbit is, or that hare, snowshoe hare, varying hare, is just, just right there. Hunting rabbits in this way is both time and energy intensive. Having the advantage of a packed snowmobile trail is a huge advantage freeing us from using snowshoes. But even then, we still need to produce at least three rabbits each day to meet our minimum caloric requirements. This assumes that there are 47 calories in an ounce of lean meat and that a rabbit is 16 ounces total. This produces 752 calories per rabbit. If you didn't eat the brain and organs instead of three rabbits, the total bumps up to four. No doubt this might be possible to accomplish on a great or even just a good day, 
but repeating it in succession day after day for a week, month, or year is unlikely. This notwithstanding, eating just lean meat will wreak havoc on the human body and its digestive system. As we found in the Wilderness Living Challenge, so-called rabbit starvation, or the act of eating nothing but lean meat with no or very little fat, is something the body quickly rejects. Despite this, we know that the Inuit or Eskimo of the far north and explorers to the region habitually subsist on mostly meats. So how is this possible? In a year-long study published in 1930 in the Journal of the American Medical Association, it was found that a diet of just meat was possible with one important caveat. That type of diet should be high in fat rather than just lean meat. In fact, a diet of just lean meat by itself results in diarrhea and nausea in just weeks. In a nothing but lean meat diet, a full recovery can be had in just two days after reintroducing fat. Early explorers and those inhabiting the Arctic were keen to find fat anywhere they could. The marrow of bones is rich in fat and can be cracked open and consumed. The tissue behind the eyes of the northern caribou is another source that is reportedly used. In this particular study, the two male subjects ate beef, lamb, veal, pork, and chicken consisting of muscle, liver, kidney, brain, bone marrow, bacon, and fat. In other words, they ate the whole animal. This is something modern man is not accustomed, preferring to substitute these organs and marrow for more palatable alternatives like nuts and vegetable oil, or more preferred fats from pig and cow. But refined fats from nuts or vegetables require massive harvesting and processing, something prehistoric man was not able to utilize. The men in the experiment ate 800 grams of meat per day in three to four meals. The protein ranged from 100 to 140 grams, the fat 200 to 300 grams, and carbohydrates from 7 to 12 grams. Translated into calories, the totals amount to 1 to 2 percent carbohydrate, 15 to 25 percent protein, and a whopping 75 to 85 percent fat. The carbohydrates came from only the glycogen in the meat. Both men were reported to be in good health after a year and only lost a few pounds of body weight. There was, however, a significant initial change in body weight due to so-called shift in water content of the body. This was caused by the body dumping water as it went into ketosis. Their diet only became an issue when the amount of fat they consumed dropped below 55%. By adding more fat, the problem disappeared. During the course of the study, blood pressure and vitamin concentrations all remained normal. So while nothing but meat is possible for subsistence, it's not enough just to get lean meat such as rabbit. Even if you could track down sufficient calories from meat, that would need to be balanced with ample fat. A rabbit simply doesn't have it. As you join me on this hunt, which by modern standards was quite successful, a much more effective strategy involves the use of snares. This is because they can be left to work as one does other things or permit one to simply rest and conserve calories. In deep snow, rabbits become accustomed to using the same trails over and over again. Looping a wire through itself and hanging it from a branch produces a noose. When the animal goes through, it tightens, constricting the animal's neck, killing it. The good thing about snares is that they are cheap, light, compact, effective, and simple enough that a small child could become useful in setting and maintaining them. While primitive trapping can work, and did for natives, it is estimated that they use somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 such traps per family in order to produce enough supplemental food. That's no small number, and will require much diligence and effort in setting, maintaining, and patrolling them. That's just another friendly reminder that, as always, in nature, there is no free lunch. While a gun is an effective companion and great fun to use, shooting animals requires one to be present and active in pursuit. It thus presents many drawbacks when compared to nearly passive methods such as snares, and this must be accounted for when trying to produce a net caloric return, which is exactly what is at stake when one tries to live off the land long term. First one. Show it off a bit. Show it off a bit. All right, it's a hare. It's got. Uh, Four legs. So these are the snowshoe hares. They have short, short ears. They turn white in the winter. And well, this one I shot in the eye, but a lot of the time what stands out is they have a black eye. 
on a white background. And also the color of the fur, I sometimes see that because there's it's like dirty white where all the snow is like very very white white. So that sometimes stands out as well. And the black tips on the ears, you get like a visual for it, right? And then yeah, they stand out. I think that's what you're looking for is like the difference in the colors, you know, pure white versus yeah. an off off white. Yeah, and the yeah. eye is very black. Yeah, and the eye I think it's is like probably what marble. you're looking for the most. And the black tips on the ears. Yeah. Those really stand out too. You know, if they're not just like kind of burrowed right into something, but. Cool. You tie flies, eh? Yeah. Would you use those whiskers? Probably. As like tails on a. You could, yeah. But you use the fur as dubbing. Yeah. Like the belly fur. Oh, yeah. As dubbing. I know they, I think they use ear as well. No. Yeah. Is it bad? Sort of bad. Just shoot a couple, a couple through there. Clean it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best way to clear a jam. Yeah.
Coming through. <laughs> Stay on me. It's just on your shoulder. You still there? No, it's it's behind you. So uh, I'm gonna skin this rabbit, and they the skin's really fragile, right? Like you can just pull it right off. Um, but I have a friend who wants to use the rabbit fur, so I'm going to be a little more careful about it. So I'm going up the leg. And then peeling it around the leg. So that's the one leg. And then I'm going to go up the other inside of the other leg. Just peel it around. It's like peeling a tangerine. So the two legs are loose. So I will be able to just pull that off. What I want is for everything to come off together, so as I peel down here, I'm going to find, basically just pushing my finger through. I'm just going to work them free. One bunny case. It's already, uh, I think maybe I'll just bushcraft this into a nice warm mitten. There you go. There you go, eh? You want to flip about it inside out, or? Ah, I think like it'll that. stay cleaner if we leave it skin out, but I, there it is. We've got the ribs, the sternum. So just like you would with a deer. Maybe you start at the other end on a deer usually. There's the inside. So there's all the little chain of poops that are working their way through to the anus. And we'll just... Pull that out, and as the guts fall out, you can see the kidneys. There's one here on the left, and there's the right one over here. We'll leave those in. We see the liver. We're gonna try to save some of that. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then in here, like because it's a headshot too, right? Like there's intact. Can you see the pink lungs in there? Yep. So the lungs are in there. The heart is attached to the lungs. I can feel it because it's harder texture. There's a rabbit heart. You can see the two chambers there. Two of the chambers of the four. That's, uh, that's your rabbit. So the same thing, the back legs, I snapped those off too, right, and cut them. They're even harder than the front legs, so I'm especially careful about breaking those because those ones can give you a pretty nasty cut as well. Get some better fire going. Yeah, so maybe we'll um, get our food together and then we'll go for another hunt. Um, see, as it gets closer to dark, as it gets later in the afternoon, there'll be more hares out and about, so we'll have a good chance to get something. So we've got some leftover, what do I call it, rescue soup. I made chicken noodle soup and my kids wouldn't eat it. So I rescued it by adding barley and salt and caramelized onions. So I've got that. We'll add some water and rinse the pot out and then uh, what we'll do is we'll quarter up that rabbit and let it simmer in there with the soup while we're out hunting and when we come back we should have delicious soup with rabbit quarters we're gonna quarter this guy up you put it in the stew so they have a really narrow hip and a lot of back leg which is not surprising they do all that jumping 
and if you cut at the right spot you'll find the hip bone and you just um, cut that back leg off then we bring it up to the pot following following ah oh. sorry I moved my hand back too fast eh? <laughs> so there's a piece let's throw in the kidney are we gonna do cut this heart in half no throw the heart some liver meats and then the arm so you can see it right scapulas there's no bone attachment they're just uh, held on by muscle and cartilage so the arm you don't have to cut through any bone it just comes off and then that goes in the pot The other great part of about a rabbit is they have these um, tenderloin muscles underneath on the inside by the spine. Just pull those out, and there's a delicious rabbit tenderloin. And then I'll just take off this other back leg. <coughs> I'll cut the back at the ribs so there'll be another piece there that'll go in and I may or may not throw the rib cage in it's pretty meatless if I was making a soup stock I would do that and the other arm so there's all your rabbit joints Just taking that inside tenderloin for you. And there's quite a bit of meat on the back too. I'll just fillet a piece off. And then I'll throw the, the piece of bone into my uh, soup. Speaking of wind, yeah. oh yeah. Get some snow on you. So we've used the entire rabbit. Not the brains. Oh, we didn't use the brains. Oh. Yeah, go. uh, <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> oh, down the neck. Oh. So for all those guys that watched us on the Wilderness <laughs> Living Challenge when we didn't use the uh, you wouldn't use organs from fish, would you? Yep. You would can. you? All right. Well, well I just ate we'll do that, that next. That big perch that we caught yesterday. I ate the roe for breakfast. Yeah. I ate perch roe. Well, the roe, the yeah, but yeah. what about the organs? Like, I mean, the yeah. heart's pretty small. It's very and, small, yeah. And there's, you can't eat the gills, and no, but you can boil it down the broth. I guess that roe is the only one I don't. Eat yeah, uh, roe is fine. I had, I've had roe before. You probably could eat the uh, male gonads too, but I don't know. Yeah, I never have. <laughs> You've never eaten the sperm? No. The sperm sack? No. Well, I'm sure it's delicious. <laughs> I don't know. I can't <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody made a joke about that, and I, uh, it's pretty funny. Thanks for the jokes. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I forgot to bring a towel today. What's that? I forgot to bring a towel for my hands. Oh. I just got soaked. Yeah, that was a lot of snow, huh? So there, yeah, we didn't eat the skin on the Wilderness Living Challenge because pike have scales and I've never eaten a pike or I've never eaten a um, 
fish that had scales, I never bothered to scale them. We always just cut it out or fillet it out. So we're trying to use more of the animal this time around. That's why you see us doing what we do this time around. Okay guys, if you're playing this in the background, it's time to get to your computer or device that you're playing with and go full screen because you're not going to be able to do this without being full screen. So go full screen right now. There's going to be a rabbit in the frame coming up in just a second. I just threw my headphones on, I put my GoPro on and this rabbit that's in the frame right now is being really cooperative with me and just staring at me. So remember what Jeremy said, we look for the eye when we're rabbit hunting. We're looking for that off color, the not pure white. Um, if you haven't spotted it by now, you're going to probably need some hints. So I'll tell you that it's not center of the screen. It's a little bit off to the left side or the right side. You have about a minute. So if you're not full screen by now, throw it up in full screen. Pause the video if you want some extra time. But you've got a little bit left still. So looking for that off-white, the ears, that eye is the dead giveaway. So of course it's not up in the trees. It's got to be below the horizon somewhere. And it's not far away. This rapper was really cooperative. So now we're going to get, we're running out of time now. So you want to pause and look more. You got to pause and look more full screen. So we're going to start cropping in here and taking out some of the picture. And uh, you're going to have the dead giveaway about now. So here we go. Cropping in. You haven't spotted it yet. Look for the eye. Look for the ears. See it by now. If not, like I say, you're getting really tight. So yeah, this is it. I mean, if you can't spot it now, you need more practice hunting. Rabbit hunting is all about spotting them. They don't move. And this is a, a snowshoe hare. Varying hare. And there it is. If you haven't spotted it by now, you've got the best end of all. We're going to replay this now from start to finish. Now I tell you this rabbit was really cooperative. Most of them are. They will kind of hang around for quite a long time until they get really nervous. They rely heavily on their cover. They like to hide with, by using the camouflage, that white, that white fur blends in. So here we go. No more than 10, 15 yards at the most. Jeremy recommends you shoot them in the head. I did aim for the head, but I missed, so I took out much, much of the, the front quarter with a pretty tight pattern at that range. I'm just going to go pick up the rabbit and we'll show it off a little bit. So not a bad haul for half a day. We went out at noon and Spend about four or five hours till dark. See what's in there? Woo. Oh, is it all melted? Need some it's more, cooked. Need some liquid in there? Yeah, liquid's all gone. I think mine's not cooked at all. Smells, it's, uh, smells good. Yeah. Well, we'll get this back up to temperature by doing this. There we go. Well, that was good. I got to sleep in after New Year's, go for a bunny hunt, have a bushfire. Cheers. Oh, I got here. Oh, back leg. That is hot. Yeah, mine's too hot to hold on to, maybe. I should have made some tongs. Tastes like a rabbit. In a slow cooker, though, they have a really nice texture. I think it's just ate an organ. Yep. You think, but you're not sure. What's your guess? Liver? Yep. Yeah. It tastes like pine needles. It tastes like nothing. Like a piece of gum that has no flavor left. Huh. But that might have been the heart then. Grousy. The grousy flavor. Uh. I think that's it for today. We're going to eat our food now because it's dark and we don't have any light. So two rabbits for the day for our efforts. 
we only started about noon.